You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Todd, I know you and I got to really dive into the recap of Shed Dog Nationals uh, this past year, but I think one of the cool things that we had uh, going on behind the scenes was our interviews with our, our different winners. Um, I know you got to, to talk with, with some of those interviews that la- aired last week, uh, but we got some cool ones this week too. Yeah, that was fun. I visited mostly with you know, people that were there that had a story, or a lot of the youth, I enjoyed talking to them. But uh, I'm looking forward to hearing the interviews this week where you're going to be talking to more of our um, award winners, whether that's uh, from the Elite Awards presented by Bone Clone um, and also our event, a lot of our event winners from the Nationals. Yeah, I mean, I get to sit down with, with the whole uh, spectrum of winners. I mean, from from Jason and Darcy uh, for their elite awards, uh, Zoe and Jeff, you know, to talk about their elite awards and, you know, as judges of the national, um, Ken winning the whole, whole thing, Travis Meadows and his dog, or maybe not his dog fuse, um, <laughs> Mason leisure. He, he spit out some good advice for young handlers out there. So, I mean, it was, it was a ton of fun to get to sit down with those people. Yeah, those are really, I, I, I enjoy those part of uh, all, a lot of the podcasts here that we do on the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. That's become a very popular segment, whether we're talking Autumn Oaks, Winter Classic, Coonhound World, Beagle. I love the interviews that we do with our, with our different participants, and it's just, it's fun to listen to. Oh yeah, and and there's so many different perspectives, and I'm I enjoy getting to hear all those different views. That's on some the sport. good stories out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, stay tuned. We'll probably jump into those right here, and um, everybody enjoy. I'm Dominic Moya, and I'm now getting the pleasure to sit down with Jason McPherson. Jason is a competitor in the sport, a judge. He. Uh, Helps manage one of the clubs out there as well. And he is also, not only was he a nominee for Ambassador of the Year, he won our Ambassador of the Year Award. Now, the Ambassador of the Year Award isn't something that has any metrics that go along with it. It's really something that that comes from the sport and from the sport's heart. And um, it's something that is voted on at the banquet by the attendees. So we have a little ballot with all our nominees, and they're the ones that that select our ambassador of the year. And so, you know, Jason, I, I kind of want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be an ambassador in, in the sport? What do you think makes a good ambassador in the sport? Well, I think somebody that has a real positive attitude, uh, promotes the sport in a positive way, um, and tries to get people involved. Um, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, is sort of a role model for the rest of us uh, to to look up to and aspire to be is kind of what I see as a is a good ambassador for the sport. Maybe reaches out to other dog sports and uh, but um, always willing to help uh, start new clubs, new people, um, work on the clubs that are there, and help with anything that's needed is kind of what I see as a as a good ambassador. And time to time in any kind of sports, uh, you see controversies arise and somebody that can uh, help deal with those in a constructive way, I think is important. That's kind of what I see as a good ambassador. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I can disagree with anything you just said there. I think that sums it up about perfectly. And, you know, we have, there's a long list of, of great ambassadors and every year um, the sport does such a great job of picking those people out and, and making sure they get their recognition. So first off, congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. It, a huge honor. I didn't know it was coming. I, I was on the trip up here. And my wife texted me, you've been nominated. So uh, the, that award to me, because it comes from the Shed Dog family, um, really meant a lot to me. Yeah, well, definitely well-deserved. And, and uh, you know, we have, like I said, a, gr- a lot of great nominees. All of them 
uh, fantastic people, but you know, you're, you're a great example of it as well. Um, so thank you for what you do for the sport. And, and I'm glad you got that recognition as well for, for all of your, your positive attitude and your contribution to it. Um, you know, I know this year, uh, we, we actually got to talk a little bit with Will Heckard and, and what he sees in the growth of, of nationals, but you have a couple of dogs in the competition. So I want to kind of pick your brain. They're both in the champion class, right? I have, I'm running two dogs. I have five dogs here competing and I think I've loaned some out because people had dogs come in heat and I've, well, I just didn't want to see somebody sit on the sidelines. And so I've got dogs that are qualified in here and I said, Hey, have at it. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm running two and so that sounds like such an ambassador thing to do <laughs> for fit up a dog to make sure that somebody didn't, didn't make the trip out here for nothing. Yeah. Actually two of them are because of that. So, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And I'm sure those people greatly appreciate it. And the best thing was yesterday, uh, Sarah Bowles, she was the one that had a, she had a really good run yesterday and she was so excited, so happy. And that to me was as re rewarding as anything because now she's like, planning all next year's hunts and <laughs> awesome. so it was great and um i know you do quite a bit getting some new people in the sport right you yeah. usually you truck people and especially in the beginning with our club every hunt before people see it listed and i would people would call and they didn't know how to get signed up they didn't know what it takes and they were scared most people are afraid i don't know if other dog sports are more intimidating but i'm like nope that's not the way shed dog people are you will, and I would invite him to come and say, we'll just come and watch. I said, no, we'll sign up. You know, you'll be fine. Let's do it. And, um, it seems like we're, we're still getting new people, not as much as we used to, but yeah, I'd spend a lot of time trying to tell them about the rules, answer questions, how to get signed up. And oh, it's kind of grown. We've got a lot of clubs out our way now. Yeah, for sure. So, um, are you tell tell me a little bit about uh, what you've seen on the courses that you've been on so far this year? What do you what do you think of our courses here? To me, when I walked them on Thursday, I thought, man, these are great. These look like actual places where you'd find wild sheds. Um, they look like places I would wild shed hunt. So I was and I and so far I'm running them. Um, that's been my impression of them. They look more like my home area. <laughs> Uh, with the oak ridges and, and whatnot, and I've got a lot of native grass, so our open field courses are, are similar to that, so um, I'm, I really like them. Yeah. So far, how are the dogs doing for you? Pretty good. Uh, my older dog, Remy, she's had a rough uh, first two days. Uh, well, she's running good. We're picking up antlers quick, but not, the curse of that last antler, you know, trying to figure out where it came from and where to go, mm -hmm. but she had a really good run this morning, and um and my other dog's running good. Uh, Stella's doing good. So, uh, like I said, it, at the end of the day, for me, it's all about fun. If you win or do good, that's that's a bonus. But, you know, especially with what happened earlier in the week, it really makes you realize with the loss of a couple of competitors' dogs that this could be your last run and to never forget that and appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of put a different spin on it for me this weekend. Yeah, and if there's listeners who who don't know the background on that, there there was a um, very unfortunate wild shed hunt that uh, that uh, took some of our our judges' dogs from them too early. So um, our hearts go out to them and and their their families. But Jason, I I appreciate you taking the time away. I don't know if you have another dog to get out there and run. I know I just grabbed you um, to come in here and, and chat a little bit with us. But, you know, I I, I want to say thank you again for what you do for this sport. And I couldn't be happier that you got the recognition that's well-deserved. And, and you know, if, if you have any last remarks for anyone who might be listening and interested in the Shed Dog program, but like you said, isn't ready to pull the trigger, do you have any last minute advice or words of wisdom to them to get them to come out. Even if it's, you know, if they're not near your club that you can drag them there. Hey, reach out to, the, I think I've been to most clubs in the country, not all of them, but I, one thing I can say about the shed dog community is that we're welcoming to new people. Um, 
And one thing I do at, at my club is when we're at the first handlers meeting, I have the new people hold their hands up and then I tell everybody else, hey, if you see this person lost, <laughs> go introduce yourself. Um, uh, if they have any questions, answer them for them. And everybody does. And so if, if, you, if this sounds fun or interesting, it is. And I suggest you come try it. Give us a whirl. I think you'll like it. <laughs> They kind of joke with me out my way. They call me the the shed father because I've <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many people hooked. Uh, but it is addicting, and uh, I can tell you, my very first shed event was uh, been a while back. We drove clear to Wisconsin, and from that day forth, we were we've been in it and hooked. And now we've got a bunch of dogs and a van full of kennels. So I, I'd say come out and give us a try. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us and. And, and chat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. I'm Dominic Moyo, and I'm sitting here with Emery Bianchin. Bye, Anchin. Bye, Anchin. Bye, Anchin. She is this year's Youth Handler of the Year. And, Emery, I'm just curious, you know, how long have you been doing the Shed Dogs? Maybe... Uh, maybe more than two years. More than two years? We started, I don't know, like we were talking about the other day, but they said two years. Two years. Wow. And look at you, your, your Youth Handler of the Year this year. Tell me a little bit about your year. Which dog were you running in, in some of your most favorite events? Um, I ran a lot of dogs, but the one I mostly ran was my dog, Oakland, and she... Sometimes she just doesn't, oh, it's either hit or miss with her. <laughs> it's hit or miss? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about, about her. Um, you know, what color is she? What breed is She's she? She's a yellow lab, and she has, like, light, kind of, like, brown eyes, and she had blue eyes when she was a puppy, Ooh. but um, she's very energetic. Yeah? And And she gets, she... Just likes um, retrieving antlers all the time. She, she's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about your most favorite or your most memorable event this past season. Um, my most favorite and memorable event was when, um, I don't know. I liked all of them. You liked all of them. Uh -huh. mm, maybe my first time running. Yeah. As well, which was the Meadows event. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really excited to start doing this because it's really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're running this weekend also at Nationals, right? Yep. Well, how are you running so far? We're doing, me and Oakland are doing okay. She's just, ever since she got really sick, she hasn't been her, the same. So she has been not doing, listening very well. So we've been getting high times because. She just, she's just tired and that thinks she can, I don't know, she's just crazy. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't tend to do very good after I'm sick either, so I can definitely understand. Yeah. Well, congratulations again on being Youth Handler of the Year. That's awesome. You, Thank you. You worked hard and you earned it, so congrats. Thank you. Well, do you have any advice if there's other youth hand or potential youth handlers out there that aren't in the sport yet? What would you tell them to get them involved or for advice on being involved? Um, I would tell them <clears throat> to practice and makes perfect and just keep practicing and you'll get better to end up like all of us that's been doing it for a while. And um, it will be very fun once you'll know how to do it. It's fun learning. Yeah, I think that's great advice. <laughs> well, thank you for, for coming on our podcast and talking with us. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm here on Sunday afternoon with Erin Lewis. How is your weekend going? It's been going good so far. The weather's been great. Dogs are running well. This is, I'd have to say, the best weather we've had for nationals. Yes. Uh, it's no, just cool enough the dogs aren't getting too hot. The wind is good. Yeah. So um, before we get into the real meat of the conversation, what do you think about the new location? 
I like it. I like that everything is still halfway close, but still feel like the courses are not so close together that there's a chance of you seeing something as you're walking by. Yeah. I, I like the variety. They were able to have courses that have different features. So I like this. Yeah. Place. There, when it comes time to looking for a site like this, that is a hard thing to find where you got six courses within easy walk of a headquarters. And this, this facility checks a lot of boxes. Yeah. I like it. Um, so you had the honor this weekend of running a dog we uh, recognized last night as one of our dog of the years, and that was our non-retrieving breed dog of the year, and that's Blue Clay's Lunar Eclipse. Yes, I was very excited. Um, I actually talked with Amy early in the season, and I feel like I talked her into it. I'm like, hey, what, let me, because uh, she, she lets me run Luna in her absence, like when she can't. She always asks yeah. me to, which I feel very honored and privileged that she trusts me enough with her because that's her baby girl. Oh, yeah. Um, so when I'm like, man, I really want to go for this. Let's, let's hit these dog of the year events with her and see yeah. if we can get her. So the Amy you're talking about is Amy Kukenbecker. Yes. Amy from Kukenbecker from, yeah, from, from uh, Blue Clay Kennels in Kim Bolton, Ohio. Yeah. And as I was thinking about talking to you today, I thought, you know, one of the things you and I might have in common is my first exposure to, um, English cockers would have been when I met Scott at the very, Scott Kukenbecker at the very first UKC event no it wasn't a ukc event it was a nashda event and when we were talking about doing this program i met scott at one and he had buzz yes so that would have been that was my first time i saw a cocker run and i thought oh man i really like that little dog and then you guys eventually got into the cockers with waldo correct and i'm guessing that exposure might have been through scott and amy correct yes but uh waldo was actually a Luna Buzz puppy. Okay, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got that. It's like a lot of these people at this at the, in our sport now, their introduction to Cockers were through um, Blue Clay. I feel like most of them were. Yeah. And even um, if Amy and Scott didn't help them facilitate getting a dog, seeing how they, their dogs work has yeah. really influenced a lot of people to want to get one because – even from a wild shed hunting standpoint, Waldo, like it's it's a great hunting dog in a very small package yeah. and easy to clean up afterwards. And you know, I've I've taken out my lab and a cocker, and they both put on twenty one miles in one day. Right. And my cocker was you know held up just just as well as a big. Dog, yeah, and so. a lot of listeners might know, but I eventually I've got one now that's two years old too. So I I love the breed. Mm -hmm. You know, they can do so much with them. Tell us a little bit about Luna. Um, so did you handle her most of the series this year? Are you and Amy tag teamed her? Or? Um, I handled her most of, of the events. And then there were a couple where I couldn't go to. Um, I believe Jen ran her, um, Jen Meadows ran her once. And then Scott ran her an event too. Okay. Um, but I was very happy to, to get to run her for most of those. Yep. And she's how old? She just turned eight. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And you said this wasn't her, this is her second dog of the year for non-retrieving. Yes. So I had forgotten that, but what a great accomplishment for that little dog. Yeah, and um, it's really bittersweet this weekend because I feel like this is her, talking with Amy, this is her last two raw, this is yeah. her last nationals. Yeah, it would be, but uh, one of the first ladies of the sport is uh, both Amy and her dog. Yes. So happy about that. Well, good. I think everything's going well. Um, we're getting ready to wrap up. You're you're done for the for the weekend. You've got your third run in with her. and. You got more left to go this afternoon? Nope, I'm all finished okay. up. Um, all right, well, we appreciate you being here. I uh, had a good time interviewing Levi, and, you know, it's been a, been a great weekend. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm joined here with Darcy Greger, right? No? What is it? Grieger. Grieger. It's okay. I, never, I never get that right. Darcy right. Grieger. It's all right. Um, and Darcy is our Judge of the Year winner. I believe when I looked at the count, you had judged or you had well over 20 assignments this past season alone. Um, all over the, the, the heartland of Shed Dog Nation, if you will, but... Uh, man, you put some miles on on your vehicle this year. Tell me a little bit about um, you know, was it was it an intentional thing? Did you kind of want to go for Judge of the Year this year? Or did you just kind of stumble on it? Um, I think it just sort of happened. I just have certain clubs that I judge for a lot, and then uh, we were asked to go out to New Jersey, so 
we went there. That was fun. I'd never been to New Jersey before and always like going to Nebraska for Ken. And we just sort of, I don't know, it just sort of happened. Yeah. You know, if you ever do that again, we have some West Coast uh, clubs. And so you <laughs> could go coast to that coast. Far. That might be a bit far. <laughs> might be a bit far. Maybe when I retire. <laughs> well, tell me, how long have you been judging for UKC Elite Shed Dog? I think probably six years. Six years. So that's just about as long as the program's been around. You can... It started pretty soon afterwards, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your year. What was one of your most memorable uh, clubs that you judged this past year? Well, I, I really enjoyed going out to New Jersey. I took my boy out a day early, and we went and went to the dog beach in the ocean and just you know chilled for a little bit and had a great time out there. Uh, of course, I got lost going back, even though it's a straight shot, but uh, <laughs> that was fun. I always like going out to Nebraska. Nebraska's really nice. Ken and Becky put on a great event. We have our on-site cabins. They they just do too much for us. I mean, that's that's a lot of fun, although we just did the Dog of the Year event, and it was 45 dogs, champion dogs up and down hills. But my co-judge, Jake, we, we did it. Had great weather, so we were lucky. Awesome. Um, what do you think are some attributes that, that make a good judge in our program? Well, you have to be thick-skinned, that's for sure. Um, you, uh, I guess you have to be fit enough to withstand a, a long day sometimes, and no matter what the weather is, and um, you know, attention to detail and make sure that you get things in the right place and planted right for, you know, same for every competitor. You have to know, you know, like wind locations or wind understand that how that works and whatnot sure now you i kind of want to circle back about new jersey okay so i've i've only driven through new jersey and just only briefly on interstates tell me what it's like for a shed dog club in new jersey i know there's there's some more wooded areas but what were their what were their grounds like it was really nice we were at a girl scout camp mm. and so it was wooded and it was just it was a perfect location you know it was just Really, really nice because, like I said, it was a clean location, nice woods, nice. We had a lot of different places we could have chosen from, but they did a really nice job out there. Oh, awesome. Awesome. They have some good participation out there, they too? They did. They did. I mean, it's it was smaller. It's growing, I think, out there, but yeah. Absolutely. I know we, we always see your name come across, and, and you know, you're out there helping helping these clubs put on the event. You know, without without judges, we, we can't run the run the dog, so... Well, thank you for, for donating that much time to the sport to be out there and, and that many miles. Who knows how many pairs of shoes you've gone through this season. Quite walking. a few, quite a few. But <laughs> luckily, I have a husband who's very supportive and stays home and takes care of the extra dogs most of the time. And I don't know, maybe he likes his alone time. I don't know what it is. Travis <laughs> calls him my imaginary husband. But <laughs> but he gets out every once in a while with me. So Yeah, I heard he, he ran... Ran dogs a couple of times this he season has. too. Right? He he has usually when it's local, but I did get him to go out to Nebraska last Labor Day, so he gets out every once in a while. Well, awesome. Well, what do you think next season? You think you'll try to go for a repeat or? Ah, uh, no, probably not. <laughs> no. Probably not. You know, we'll probably have somebody like Ryan Melton wanting to do forty some again, and that that was tough to even even compete with Ryan. Ryan did a great job. So yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you again for your time and, well, and, and you. congratulations on, on winning thank you very Judge much. of the Year. Thanks. Well well earned, much deserved and and you know, thank you also for the for judging national. You've been judging oh, here at National yeah. for about as long as you've had a license, right? Yep, yep. It's been a fun experience for me. I really appreciate it that you guys have asked. So Absolutely. Well the honor is certainly ours. Um any uh any last thoughts? I know, like we said, but you've judged just about every single, net, almost every single national. And so you've seen it grow and you've seen it from all of its locations and all from a judge's perspective. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on getting to see it go oh. from six years ago to today? Well, there's a lot more breeds in now than used to be, a bigger variety. Um, lot more people uh it's you know just it's just grown drastically but the one thing that i forgot to say was uh you know a planter will make or break you as far as a judge and you know i i had a great one this weekend he was awesome but uh yeah they they will make or break a judge definitely and they are underappreciated i believe but, absolutely but uh, yeah it's it's just been fun and you know i've learned a lot watching dogs and reading dogs and you know i, I learn as a handler just by 
watching. Sure, sure. Well, thank you again for for taking the time to sit down with us. Well, thank you. Know, you. It, it's been a busy weekend. Yes, for everybody, it has, so. and the weather's been great. This has been perfect. So. I know it's definitely been a, a beautiful yeah. week for Nashville. Congratulations! Thank again. you again. Thank you. Alan, I know we both have new Daltra Pathfinder 2s. How are you liking yours so far? I'm liking it. I've even had the opportunity now to use mine where I didn't have service, where I download uh, the map of that area, and uh, it works flawlessly. Love it. I agree. I really like my Daltra Pathfinder 2 as well. I've used it quite a bit the past few months. I really like the crystal clear maps. I like that it doesn't lose uh, service very much, and I can't have, I don't have many bad things to say about it at all. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS caller partner of UKC. I'm joined here with Jeff and Zoe Rada. They were a father-daughter judge team here at Nationals this year. Um, and they also had quite a bit of success in, the, in their dogs in our Dog of the Year program as well. You know, the they won the... Uh, Elite Award presented by Bone Clone for Dog of the Year, which goes to the champion class dog that goes, you know, across the Dog of the Year series of events and performs the best and and, and outstands um, in the crowd. So their dog Tundra, out of the events she went to, she was on the podium, which means first through fourth and over half of the events she entered and of those podiums half of them were first place uh, wins so that means she had not only had a one in two chance of being on a podium but she had a one in four chance at any event she went to of being in first place so that you know when you look at the numbers and everything that she she was an absolute dominator in her dog of the year season and, and jeff you know Talk to me a little bit about um, how she got to that. Was that an intention you guys had set, or did you just go to a couple of early events and, and just saw the momentum and rolled with it? After the first event, we decided, you know, she podium both days. We thought, nah, let's try it. But I got a lot of outreach from a lot of my friends in the shed dog community, said, you need to run with it. So we ran with it. And with the help of Ryan Melton taking her to some events I couldn't go to, and we just swapped his dog Reese out with Tundra, and we made it happen. Absolutely. She ended up running through the, the Dog of the Year event series. She had, what, four different handlers, right? For Dog of the Year, she only had the two. It was me okay. and Ryan Melton um, throughout the year for events. She ran for me, my wife Cassie, daughter Zoe. Ryan Melton and Dave Larson here at Nationals. And, and, you know, across the board at any event she went to, set aside Dog of the Year, she was a serious competitor. I mean, you couldn't, you almost couldn't touch her the entire year. That, that is a serious animal. Tell me, tell me a little bit about Tundra. You know, how old is she and, and, and her history in this program? She's uh, six years old. I ended up getting her out of Connecticut. Um, we had her at, uh, Blue Plate Kennels with Scott and Amy Kuchenbecker. Scott worked her personally for me before I could get her. And they actually put her in a working class, her first event. And after that, I got her home. We finished out her working title. And once we got in the champion, we actually timed out three times for sure. And then we started clicking together and then boom. So here we are, 10 time elite. Yep, 10-time elite shed dog. I don't think there's another dog with that, that many. I mean, that's, that's such an accomplishment. Hall of Fame dog on top of that. Um, for anyone listening that is not super familiar with the program, to be an elite shed dog, to earn that title, you need your grand champion title, and you need three wins after earning that title. So that means since earning that title, how's that math breakdown? That's... Uh, 30, 30 wins, 30, 30 first place wins. I mean, that's a consistent dog, and she showed her consistency this year. And she was actually at a dog of the year events. I think she had fastest overall time of the weekend at eight different events throughout the year. 
<laughs> that you know consistency that that's awesome that's fantastic and and she was here i think she put up a pretty good show in this year at, at nationals as well i mean you couldn't ask for much more of her right right um and she's only been with dave larson he ran her one day in nebraska before nationals and he just ran her these three days friday saturday sundays all he's been with her that's that's fantastic I know we're kind of, you know, around the the wild shed season. Do you have any big plans with Tundra as far as uh, shed season goes? You got any big trips coming up that she's going to be first string out there with you guys? No. Um, she went on a couple with me, and that's about it. So we're probably going to back off a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, no, and, and to share some of the um, the – the joy of our elite award presentation bone clone had a, a very special presentation for for zoe right yes so uh they I, I spoke with will hecker on here and and he talks about that a little bit but you know what what were your thoughts at what point during his little speech did you realize that they were talking about you was it at the end when he talked about cheese stick or was it the <laughs> second he uh started rattling off um, your laundry list of accomplishments he some of the uh accomplishments definitely gave it away um i think it's pretty known you know kree was the first to hit a thousand two thousand and three thousand um dad and tundra were pretty close to catching us on the three thousand um but just stuff like that i kind of knew it was her so yeah what were uh what were your thoughts did you see anything like that coming no i did not i was completely shocked um, mom had asked me a while ago, kind of, you know, what was like through the years, like, what are some of the things that Kree's won or she did? And so I was, I gave them to her and I didn't really think that much of it, you know, um, just gave me a chance to brag about my dog to my parents. And then he started kind of rattling them off and I was like, hmm, now it's connected, you know? Yeah, it all makes sense. It wasn't yep. just her giving you a chance to brag a little right. bit. <laughs> well, you know, that that in itself is an accomplishment too, right? I mean, you've been part of this program just about since the beginning in the youth class, and here you are. I know Will talks about you're the um, youngest person to hold a judge's card. Pretty sure you're the youngest person to judge nationals. I mean, there's that that's phenomenal. You, you've had an uh, incredible career in the shed dog program. I mean, what? What are some of the key experiences when you think back on your your career in this sport? What are some of the the standout moments of of your career? Wow, um, I think some of the obvious, like um, winning nationals in twenty twenty one with Cree, was really big for us. Hitting those the Hall of Fame, the two thousand three thousand points. Um, she just earned her five time elite. So the titles and the points like that, but also being able to travel and um, the friends and the people that we've met along the way, some of them are just like family. So traveling eight plus hours a weekend, but getting to see them and hang out with them is always great. Yeah. Um, what do you have any one shed hunt or shed uh, shed hunt event specifically that stands out in your mind when you think of all the ones you've been to with Greek? Was it nationals or or is there another one that stands out there? It was probably nationals. Yeah. Yep. Do you remember offhand what her overall time was that year? I do not. I wish I wish I had it in my laptop and me and could pull it up, but uh, she also another incredible animal. I mean, you guys as a family have have had some you know, key key players in this sport, mm -hmm. um, and and you both continue to to participate and set such a great example for for the sport. I mean, Zoe, coming up through that youth program, the these young kids that we see out here running now, that they they look up to you and you set such a great example for them. Thank you. Um, so we we thank you for that. Uh I kind of want to also share some con express my condolences. I know you guys had a very tough go here. I don't want to get too somber, but you guys had a tough situation. You're coming into nationals. Mm -hmm. The shed dog community is behind you. Our listeners are behind you, um, and and we thank you guys for for all that you have done and, and sacrifice for this sport and and what you've done to 
to help you know, judge this event given the circumstances that this shows so much incredible strength in you and your family and you know we're all here with you thank you, thank you. you know uh, i do want to end on on a happy note i mean you guys together have have done an incredible job judging this year's nationals zoe you're always invited back if you'd ever like to judge <laughs> but i was talking to will i said i believe it's her spring break it, it is it right? is yep so while all those other kids are partying at pcb and, and mm -hmm. myrtle beach you're you're in altamont uh, <laughs> illinois, <laughs> illinois yep. judging shed dog not even getting to run one but just nope. walking up and down the nope. courses judging and and that's such a sacrifice in itself and and it shows what the sport means to to you and and we're glad that we've given you uh we we've provided a sport that that you love that much absolutely so thank you thank you for being here judging thank you thank you jeff for being here um congratulations for dog of the year uh, congratulations for all the awards that that you two have combined um you you, you make a fantastic team and your your family is is uh, appreciated in this sport thank you thank you I'm sitting here with uh, Travis Meadows. Travis Meadows handled and and uh, found his way to the top of the podium for the working class with um, Scott Kukenbecker's Fuse, also known as RPM's Light 'Em Up. Tell me a little bit about Fuse. Fuse is just one of those dogs, you know. It's just he's he's just fun to run. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just he's got the drive. He's got everything he wants. He just enjoys finding the antler and pleasing the handler. Yeah. I mean, he, he truly does. Well, tell me a little bit about you guys' uh, season as a whole. You know, did you guys, you know, what were your thoughts through the dog of the year running? What were your thoughts just watching watching him work this year? Did you did you foresee this maybe in, in his future? Honestly, I did not because I didn't even start running this dog until mid-season. So it wasn't even, it was Scott's dog and, you know, me and him were kind of back and forth and then Scott needed help because he had so many extra dogs at one event. So I ran Vibe and man, he just, he lit it up for me. He listened to me well, he'd done everything. He was just one of those dogs and it, we kind of built a relationship. So then Scott's like, well, just take him home and start running him. And I did. And it was unreal after that. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any, uh, any back and forth with Scott on on who Fuse runs better for now, or <laughs> what, what's that deal? Well, well, Scott knows definitely is better for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He can he runs good for Scott. He does, but I don't know. Every dog runs good for a certain person, and mm -hmm. me and him just happen to click. Yeah. So. Well, hey, that might be your dog in the near future. <laughs> right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well. Tell me a little bit about your weekend with Fuse. Um, what were your thoughts after after Friday, that first course? Were were you feeling good? Uh, like what 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 were you thinking? Because I know no uh, Fuse put up less than a two and a half time on on that um, you know one of the first courses this weekend, right? Yeah, I honestly didn't think I was gonna have be in contention. Honestly, um, a two and a half time and working with so many dogs that we have that are so exceptional anymore. I honestly thought, I was like, ah, that's not going to cut it. And then uh, I ran a, a even better time with another dog, the, you know, Willow, on on Friday. So I was like, well, he's out. But then, you know, Willow bombed it yesterday. Stuff happened. But uh, he was just so consistent. It ended up w or working out for him. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely averaged out because <laughs> I, I see his fastest time here was was like a minute and a half, just just above a minute and a half. Yeah. And and I always talk about how incredible it is for some of these dogs that can put up times like that and cover that much ground in a minute and a half, an entire football field, <laughs> basically, in the woods. Absolutely. You know, we're not talking about, you know, the backyard. We're talking about in the woods, yeah. finding antlers, retrieving them, and then kicking back off and finding the next one. Absolutely. And also on top of that, you think this dog just had an eight and a half hour run in a truck. Mm -hmm. eight and a half hour ride just to get here and then you know we end up showing up a little bit late and trying to air them out and trying to get them back to their normal 
yeah it, it, it was a lot on the dog and it says a lot for him for sure absolutely you know anytime you you leave home now you're throwing them out of their routine and yeah and you know, we, we've had nationals at the same location for a while, and here we change it up for nationals, too. So, you know, there were a couple of dogs that might have been used to, to our old location, and then, boom, here we are. This is a spot that really none of these dogs had ever seen before. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it it uh, it really put them to the test. Um, what were your thoughts on the course? So we had three different courses. Did you have one that was a standout in your mind that you – just looking, maybe not his best time, but just one of your favorite courses this weekend to be on for working. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I thought the the one down in the bottom, course one or mm-hmm. course, yeah, course, course one, course one mm-hmm. was going to be good, you yeah. know. But it ended up being the tougher one because of the wind. The mm-hmm. wind up here down in that little ravine, it, it messed with the dogs quite a bit. But um, we got lucky with it, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny for for those people who are listening that aren't familiar with what course one was. Um, it was back in the woods, and it actually uh, it was pretty cool because there was a trail that kind of bisected it. And on one side, you have like super young growth trees, like the stuff that you would see a bunch of uh, buck rubs on, getting that velvet off. And then on the other side of it, the other half of it was older growth stuff and some some dead falls and things like that. So it had you know a lot of um, variety on one course and that trail going right up the middle. So it was a pretty unique course, and and uh, apparently it led it lended itself to to you know standing out in your mind as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yes. Uh, well, you know, I, I kind of want to give you the floor on on your thoughts on the weekend in general, and and uh, you know, you you uh, you're gonna be on the champion class with Fuse next year. Absolutely, he yeah. is, he's getting bumped up to champion just as soon as we leave here. First <laughs> next one, he's going to that for sure. Awesome. So and he's he's not even two years old, so he is he is very well making a mark for himself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That I mean that's that's quite the start for a young dog. <laughs> yes, and it come is. out here, hammer down on it. Well, we'll look forward to seeing Fuse on some of the uh, the dog of the year rankings next year. Maybe I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we'll see you guys at nationals, and and you know with a young dog with that much talent, I, I'm sure we'll be we'll be seeing him in some of these podiums here soon. I sure hope. <laughs> All right. And Travis, while I've got you here, I do also want to talk about youth. You have two sons that have come up through the youth program. Yes. Um, tell me tell me about your thoughts with, with the youth program and, and your perspective on it from from a parent's standpoint. It, it's amazing how the UKC is finally, like, I mean, what they do for the youth. It is just, it is phenomenal. Like, that they, everybody we talk to, even that's not part of running dogs, like this is such a family oriented event. They just love it. And, and that's the reason, like, it, it's amazing. Like our boys can come out here and run and we've met so many nice people because of this sport and it, it's a blast. It truly is. Yeah. So it's been fun watching your boys come up through the program. I know I've <laughs> only been here for a few years, but you know, they're, they're shooting up like weeds and they are <laughs> all, all of the youth competitors. It's It's great seeing, um, all these kids run around and get to watch them come up. And like even one of our judges this year, one of the judges that judged Fuse <laughs> came up through the youth program. <laughs> yep. That, yeah. What, just, what an event. So yeah. it's amazing. Well, thank you, Travis, for taking your time out of this. I know um, it's been an exciting weekend for you, so I don't want to take too much time away from you celebrating with your family. But um, congratulations to you and, and also to your son, who who was one of our uh, podium <laughs> Fourth, uh, yeah. handlers in our youth class this year. <laughs> You know, what a what a great family and you guys you guys do a lot for the sport. You represent the sport well, so we, we appreciate what you guys do as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm joined here with Kenneth Newcomb. Ken handled and owns the twenty twenty four National Shed Dog Champion. That's <laughs> that's something, right? That is pretty. That's something else. Yeah, you're you're kind of riding the high right now, huh? Absolutely. Sweet. Um, so something that Ken actually uh, mentioned to me is that this is um, it. It would count as one of Shade's first place wins, which goes towards Elite Shed Dog number four. Four. Yep. So that that's on top. Yeah. That, that's beyond the cherry on top. There we go. So. 
Tell me a little bit about um, Shade's run here uh, this past weekend. Well, Shade's run this weekend is just, um, it's its beyond my expectations, honestly. Um, if I can a little bit, you know, Shade's story really is that um, she was um, purchased to be an HRC dog. And at about six months old, we discovered that she had broke the growth plate in her front leg. Mm. And so... We backed off from doing HRC stuff. She does have her SHR, started hunting retriever title. But um, about three years ago, we started looking for a sport that she could participate in and, you know, maybe just have some fun with her. And we found the Shed Dog game. We traveled to Michigan to do that. Shade actually won her very first event she ever entered in champion. Oh. And... From there, um, she has just exceeded our expectations, really. Um, so she kind of got started in it right before she was seven years old, and she's just shy of ten now. Wow. And when she, when we discovered that growth plate, um, our veterinary from the university told us just to let her grow into it, don't do surgery, and she'd get used to it and be fine. But they actually told us at about eight years old she would probably be a couch dog because she'd be arthritic and wouldn't want to do it. But they said. <laughs> If she enjoys playing games, let her play games. And um, Shade always gives me 100% all the time. And this this is, we never thought that, I mean, when we got her grand title, mm -hmm. we thought that she had done a lot for us. And then to go on to her ESDs and her Hall of Fame and now a national champion, it's just, uh, it's just more than we ever could have expected. Yeah, I mean, that what a story, right? <laughs> you know, uh, not only is she not a couch dog, yeah. but now she's a national shed dog champion. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something else. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at, you know, her times this weekend and, and you know, there's so much consistency. Yes. You know, there there's clearly some courses that, that were a challenge, but they are challenging for all of the dogs. Right. Um, tell me a little bit about your runs this weekend and, and your your mindset as you're going into each one of these days. Yeah. Well, when we went into it really, I mean, I guess when we came here, I always kind of have a goal of like top 10 would be really cool. Top 10 would be really cool. Um, and with shade, I just, my goal is really just to get whatever I can out of her. Um, like I said, she's, she's proven that she can do it. She can, she can do it. She can run with, with the best of them. And, um, so we go into it and shade is of the dogs I have shade is a dog. I just trust. Um, Shade is a wild bird hunter on top of everything else. Ooh. And I believe that um, it really excels her shed game. Um, I know when we got into it, a lot of people told me, oh, you can't mix the two. You can't mix the two. The dogs won't go both ways. And I kind of feel differently about that. I feel that her being a wild bird hunter makes her just a better hunter in general. And so like we started on um, the grass course mm -hmm. on Friday with some pretty thick grass and um she really just she kind of turned it on and and like i said she i think her blank was blank too and um of the dogs i have she's the dog if she goes through a blank i just blindly trust her if she says it's not there it's not there and so we had a really nice run on friday we didn't have much wind a little nervous about that i'll be honest but she just kind of put on those 100 hunting abilities, and I think she ran like a 203 or something that mm -hmm. day. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and so then we ran um, the course over one of the woods courses, and um, we actually – she actually missed one. She missed the first antler going out. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to – we went around. Um, she hunts hard, though. She came around, we came right back to that block that we had missed, and fortunately it was the right one, and, and she picked it up, and it was good. We ran a 313, that made me a little nervous. I'm gonna be honest, I at that point, um, I kind of thought, well, I, I don't feel here, you can miss one and make it. Um, but she she did, we looked at it, and I think that um, at banquet time, the times were posted, and we knew we were in about third place at that time, and. And we, uh, my wife and I, Becky, started talking a little bit. Boy, wouldn't it be cool if she had actually podium? That would mm -hmm. be really cool. 
And, but we also knew that we had course four to run back in the back. And it probably wouldn't have made me so nervous, but the other dog we brought ran a 1320 mm -hmm. on it on first day. Of course, there was no win that day yeah. and it was a little tougher. And so we just went out there and I, I had to convince myself, you just have to trust this dog. This dog does not lie to you. And we went out there and, um, I, her blank was block one, which always makes me nervous block one blanks, but, um, she just moved right through the course hunting like a hunting dog should picked him up. And when he told us it was two twenty, we knew we were in the game. We had no idea we were vying for a championship. We thought we were vying for fourth place, quite honestly. Sure. And then as things went on, people kind of started coming up and, and saying, you know, I think you might have this. I think you might have this. And it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, quite honestly. Sure. So, so. Now, you said you do quite a bit of wild bird hunting. You're talking mm -hmm. upland bird? Yeah, mostly upland, yeah. And, and, you know, like he mentioned, course six was a field course with, with denser grass. And mm -hmm. uh, myself and Todd Kellum, when we were helping tape off horses, uh, Todd's a big upland guy himself. And he said, man, this is a place I'd, I would look for, for uh, you know, to, to hunt quail or, or yeah. partridge or mm -hmm. something. Like there would be birds in here. Right. And, you know, she's a dog that's used to that type of, uh, that type of terrain, that type of foliage. And it seems like it is showed because of the, the four podium dogs, she put up the best time by almost a minute on that course. So, you know, yeah. that kind of shows that she's a little bit stronger in that type right. of environment. Not to mention the fact that, uh, for people who said, Hey, those dogs can't cross back and forth. You know, if, if that was true, a dog that was, you know, wouldn't be able to do that would be looking for birds and they might be right. blinking some of those, those antlers because right. that's what their mind's on. But mm -hmm. no, apparently not. And, uh, you know, looking at, at course four, you talked about that, that was one of the tougher courses and we, we yes. saw it challenge a lot of dogs this weekend. Um, but you know, it's a national championship and, and that's a good place for dogs to get challenged. Yeah. And, um, when you look at all of the times of podium dogs, some of them had some better times than you on course two, mm -hmm. but course four was one of those defining things that, that really separated those. That was tight. Yeah. Uh, but you guys were still able to go in there and dig out the fastest time on that course too. Yeah. So, you know, but it seems like between course four that, like you said, you trust her and she dug it out and course six, which is her home field advantage. It's an upland field, tall grass, thick yeah. grass. I mean, those were the ones that, that won her this. And that's, I yeah. think that's pretty cool. Right Absolutely. There. Thank you. Like I said, it's uh, it felt, it felt, it was amazing. But like I said, we grass courses are, like you said, there it's, it's what she plays in every day, you know, when we go hunting and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and so uh, it, when we came out of that one, good, we, and we knew we'd come out of that one really good. And so, yeah, we were feeling good at that point. So. Well, awesome. Uh, what do you, where do you go from here? What, what are your next plans for, for shade? Are you going to try to make a bid a dog of the year next year, or are you just going to feel it out and enjoy your time with the dog you know, and let the, the chips land where they may? The answer is we're probably just going to just keep playing the game. Um, we probably won't vie for dog of the year. Unfortunately, um, uh, my wife and I are both, uh, we're both teachers with mm -hmm. limited time off and that extended travel for us just it, it isn't possible for us to to do that um but we enjoy the game wherever we are and uh we try to we do try to make some trips and and uh like this was a 10-hour trip for us and but we've made a lot of eight-hour trips we've been up to michigan a few times things like that so we still do get out some probably won't vie for dog of the year actually but uh um we're just going to keep enjoying it. And like I said, we've got a couple younger dogs, but we're going to let Shade just keep playing until she tells us she doesn't want to do it anymore. So that's right. Well, you know, you, you made the 10 hour trip well worth it. Yes. So, yeah. um, congratulations on Thank that. You. Congratulations to Shade as well. Um, phenomenal performance. You know, congrats to her fourth elite shed yeah. dog and, and, um, you know, all of her other accomplishments that, Great work for both of you guys. So. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. I'm joined here with Mason Leisure. Uh, Mason took the first place podium in our 
youth handler class here at the 2024 Shed Dog Nationals. Mason, tell me a little bit about your your time in the sport. How long have you been doing the uh, the Shed Dog game? Probably about a year now. Wow, a year and you're already uh, performing at the level that you are. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your dog that you ran this weekend. So she's a friend of our, a family friend, and I ran her ever since I started the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, she's pretty fast and pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you guys as pop up over the course of the Dog of the Year series, and and also seen the uh, Youth of the Year. You know, we we look at all you guys running in that youth class across the country. And I saw your your names pop up quite a bit, and it seems like you guys are are pretty good, huh? Yeah, I run her as often as I can, but when I can't, when they're not there, I, I'll run my own dog named Lev. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about um, your season leading up to, to Nationals with, with Pixel. What was one of your most memorable runs this whole year? Hmm. Honestly, probably today was like the coolest day because it yeah. like was like, oh, I really needed that, and it just happened. Yeah, the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your weekend. Was was there any point that when you got here, did you think that you and her were were going to be taking the the youth category? Or did did you have just a feeling? Definitely didn't think I was gonna win. My main goal was just to get on podium and just see what happened, but did not think I was gonna win. Yeah. What point what was one of the toughest courses you thought this weekend? Probably the uh what course is the first one? The it was like the field. The field? Yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty tough, huh? It had all that grass and everything around it. Yeah, and the wind can push through the grass and I knew behind the grass pattern. Mm-hmm. But it looks like she still did pretty good in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what what is your plan going forward? Do you you know, are you thinking you're gonna be a professional dog trainer one day or what do you wanna do when, when you get older? I think that's probably up there. Um I'm not sure yet, but that probably one of the options yeah just keeping your options a little bit open yeah well tell me a little bit about um other hobbies do you do anything but shed dog or since you guys are so competitive you're just all in for shed dog so i play baseball um we do like like fishing sometimes we'll go play airsoft Mm -hmm. um sometimes we'll ride dirt bikes we ride BMX. Oh, cool. Um, hmm, what else? That's probably about the main hobbies. Yeah. Is Shed Dog your favorite? One of them. Yeah, yeah it's up there. Well, Mason, what advice would you give to any other uh, new youth handlers coming into the sport? I mean, you, you only got into this not long ago, and, and here you are. Um, what advice would you give to other people that want to be sitting where you are one day or don't even know it yet? Just try to have fun with it and don't put pressure on yourself. Start like trying to do what you want to do one day. Yeah, that's probably really, really good advice. Well, thank you, Mason, and congratulations. That's awesome. Um, we're we're all very happy for you, and I know uh, know your family is as well. So. Thank you for for taking the time and and enjoy celebrating with your family, with Pixel and and everybody else. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed those interviews and and enjoyed listening to them as much as I did in the moment. And, uh, you know, I want to thank our sponsors again and our partners, you know, Yukonuba, our dog nutrition partner of the United Kennel Club, and, and Dogtra, the GPS collar partner. Uh, those, those partners help make our nationals what it is, and so we appreciate their participation, and thank you guys for listening.
Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.